Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. You Darvish goes to the Padres. Tommy Canely goes to the Dodgers, so that's two even moves. Sam Fold to the Phillies and a ton of other stuff. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name's Jimmy. I got Jake over there, Trev over there. BBD is in the room with me. And we got some baseball news. We did an impromptu episode yesterday because the Padres traded for Blake Snell. We ended the episode. We said, well, we'll come back tomorrow, today, just to clean up all the ancillary other moves that happened over the Christmas weekend. And guess what? Then the Padres went and traded for you, Darvish. So now we have another huge blockbuster trade to talk about before we dive into all the ancillary stuff. Jake is still coming to you from his mother's house in Connecticut, and Trev is still coming to you from his wife's house in California. Trev, how you doing? Your hair looks great today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is, uh, you know, we did the pod yesterday, and you said, let's save all the rap sesh for Tuesday. I love the rap sesh. I want to ask you guys about Christmas presents, all that good stuff. But to answer your question, it's a beautiful day out. I went on a run this morning. I took a hilarious picture of this failed Christmas decoration that looks like Santa is spanking Rudolph. Mm. Uh, So it was a good morning. I don't know if that's failed. It's pretty funny. I I was running and I was like, this is hilarious. It looks like Santa is an abusive father and, and, and Rudolph did something that he didn't like. Well, Santa was as abusive as ever, dude. He's basically child labor king. Anyway, Jake, how are you? I think there's grown up adults. I think they split up the kids in the, the grown up. Yeah, uh, those grown up elves. Elves, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. Uh, Trev, next time you run past the house, just pop in and say hi. I'm good. Uh, shout out to Jesper Anderson and his Swedish baseball team. They were in my DMs before. Big talking baseball fans were huge in Sweden. Shout out to them. Uh, the chat's going. I'm I'm doing well, man. Baseball's so hot in the streets, it's insane. And Jim, I mean, we're geniuses. We while we were talking last episode about all the Snell stuff, you know, Trevor asked, "Are are they out on Bauer?" And I think we were totally right. There's no way they're in on Bauer at this point. Uh, they Zero. just instead traded for you, Darvish. So yeah, just one. I don't think you, Darvish, is getting the credit he deserves amongst. This is a big move. You, Darvish, is a stud. I, I, and we'll we'll detail the trade uh, and get into all of that and do our discussions. Uh, I mean, the good for the Padres, man. What a time we ended. Well, actually. For the patrons, they got to hear this um, in the post show. I didn't say it while we were recording yesterday, and I said, I wish I said this. If you know anyone that's getting into baseball, send them the Padres way. Not only are they getting studs, they're getting guys with personality. You Darvish is on Twitter all the time. Uh, Clevenger is a big personality in the game. Tatis is so fun. Machado. Love him or hate him, he's a personality in this sport. Uh, I mean, who else do they got? I mean, uh, uh, Snell is big in the gaming world. Like, this is a very um, fan-included team right now. Or, or I don't know what – they're giving back. There's entertainment on and off the field from this crop of players. So the Padres are doing the damn thing. Now, I am going to shit on the Cubs and the state of baseball, but I, it is good to note that – the Padres deserve a lot of love right now. I mean, this is exactly how you want your team to operate. Now, if you do this over 20 years, here comes some Yankee bias, you will get shit on and everyone just says you buy championships and that like blah, 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 blah. But in reality, every team wishes they had owners that every offseason went out and made trades and made signings to get them the best team possible. I don't know if we've had... Moves like this. I mean, this is two guys that have gotten Cy Young votes within the last three years, as well as Clevenger, who they went out and got last year, who they have for the next year. The Padres are fucking doing the damn thing. I love it. Isn't it interesting? Like, we talked, uh, we were doing, like, our preseason prop bets. And I, I, I mentioned about the Padres. I said, I'm going to take the over because they. it's, like, their time. They got to go. Like, it's, they were, like, uh what was that called? They like running in place for a long time where they were signing these big free agents. They had a great farm system, but it just like they couldn't put it together on the big league field. 
2020 happens. They go out, have an unbelievable season, and then the off season comes around and they're making moves. This this is what we've been waiting for with the Padres. You know, they they started the rebuild. They signed some guys. Now they're trading away some of those prospects that they got. They're bringing in major league talent. This is exactly what you want if you're a Padres fan. If you're a baseball fan, you have to respect what they're doing because I know you said they're going out there buying stuff like the Yankees. They're not really going out there buying stuff. They got Snell on the cheap. They had the Cubs uh, to eat a portion of Udarvish's salary. We don't know what that is yet, but I think they're doing it the right way. They've held on to their top prospects. Traded the way, you know, they're three to five, I think. Yeah, you got to remember Machado and Hosmer and, and some of the signings they've had that are also part yeah. of this plan. Yeah, Machado, God, man, he costed a lot, and, and so did so did Hosmer. Mm-hmm. But for some, you know, they're able to figure out how to get these pieces in and fit within uh, their budgets. I still don't think they're uh, approaching the luxury tax. So that's an interesting thing that they're going to have to talk about if they need to add a piece. I think they're getting close now. It's awesome. It's awesome. How how could you not be excited for San Diego? Uh, yeah, Jim, I mean, the, the dark side of baseball is showing its head when the Cubs are trading away. Darvish, who finished second in the Cy Young last year for essentially pennies on the dollar because he has a contract that he deserves. Uh, so yeah, I mean that, that part of it sucks. I mean, the Padres, like Trevor was mentioning, you know, they're cashing in with prospect capital, essentially. They, they got, you know, two really good pitchers on all right contracts, if not good for Snell. Uh, and they didn't have to touch any of their top five prospects. You know, they, they didn't go crazy heavy into the bankroll and it's, uh, it, it's crazy. They're, they are one of the few teams that position this whole thing well that had an owner that was in on the process. And the whole process has worked since Preller has come in as GM. And now he is, he is already godlike in San Diego. And they, you know, they still got to go out on the field and do it. And I think the other thing that uh, Trev just triggered in my head uh, man, these Padres, dude, I genuinely forgot what I was about to say, but I love what Trevor said. Thank you. Yeah. Let's talk about prospects for a second, though, because people freak out about prospects. But what I want everyone to do, you're like, hey, this guy, first rounder, fifth overall, first rounder, 10th overall, he's a stud. Go back to each draft year and go in the first round and read the names. You're going to know about 10 of them. And the other 20 guys that got drafted in the first round, they don't make it, man. You know, or if they do, it's a cup of coffee or they're still struggling in the minor leagues. Prospects are not sure things, no matter how highly they're rated, no matter how highly they're drafted. So I love getting rid of prospect capital, going out and getting established studs. You Darvish, the Cy Young dude. Let me tell you about prospects. I love it. These guys aren't even prospects, Trev. They got Zach Davies from the Padres. Jake said it yesterday. He had a really good year last year and can be an arm for them and go into their rotation right now. Laughable that the Cubs like wanted to trade Darvish away for someone that can help them right now because like uh, if you want to win in 2021, you're going to keep Darvish. But Davies does have some more years on him. These other four players that the Cubs are getting from the Padres weren't top 10 in the Padres organization, weren't top of any charts i think some people like they were all gonna land in the top 20 padres well who cares about top 20 i don't give a shit these kids are one of them 17 years old one of them's 18 one of them's 20 i mean yeah i'm not trying to say these guys will not be studs one of them maybe but this is such a bad return this is a salary dump by the cups oh yeah i mean this is this is. is such a bad return and there's people that love prospects and the value, and maybe three of these guys show sh- sh- are awesome in the next two years, and the Cubs flip them again for something, or maybe one turns into half of Darvish. But this is this is a I mean, if you're a Cubs fan, this is not good. This is not a good trade. Doesn't make any sense. If you're a Cubs fan, you got to be like, Dude, we were we were just in the we just won the World Series not that long ago. We pot- still have a majority of our team in place it's a buyer's they market don't. and the padres are the only buyers and they're like they had what six pitchers and they're in top 100 these numbers might be wrong they had six pitchers that were in the top 100 that might be a wrong number but they had six pitchers that were good they lost two of them they still have four of their top pitching prospects as well as now uh fucking paddock you darvish snell 
Lamette. Mackenzie and, Gore. And, I guess and, you're probably including him in the prospects. Gore's the prospects, and Klebs on the way. I mean, it's a it's almost like slim pickings. It's almost almost like if this was a fantasy league, you'd want to kick the Cubs out and be like, dude, you just gave them everything. <laughs> That's well, a good analogy. Trev, Trev just said, like, the you know, the Cubs team, and he starts naming the guys. It's over. It's over. Lester hit free agency. Schwarber didn't get re-signed. Like they could have just offered him money to still be on their team and they didn't do it. It's Bryant's last year. Baez. Like, and I, I saw a funny tweet the other day that was like, how messed up is baseball that the Cubs fought tooth and nail to get the extra year of Chris Bryant. And now <laughs> they're doing everything to get off of him. which by the way, think of all the one year contract guys and the trade values we're seeing around the league. If you see Chris Bryant, if you see Lindor get moved, you're not getting a package. Look at these trade deals. So um, I, I don't know. Part of it's exciting. If you're a Cubs fan, it sucks, man. You got your ring, and obviously that's the goal of the sport, and they erase the curse of the Billy Goat and all the good stuff. But, you know, me and Jimmy went through it one day, and it's it's crazy. A couple games that they lost, they went from best record in the NL in 17 or or. 18 and then they lost one game so they were in the wild card and then they lost there and now look at them i mean it's a it's full rebuild minus the fact that they could win the nl central which i'm stealing this line from jim it's a race for 85 in the nl central this year yeah who can let who can finish 500 you've won the division congrats you know it's what's funny about the Padres is they're still positioned to make more moves. Well, I don't know why, Trev, because the, the fucking Cubs didn't take one of their top five prospects. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They might not have uh, money, which I said on my Twitter yesterday. These teams have money, dude. Like, their budget, they set the budget. It's not like the league sets the budget. They could say, my budget's $40 million, and that's their budget, but clearly they can spend more than that. Like, the Rays giving up on Snell because he's too expensive, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's, he's not. He's cheap. He's very cheap for uh, the caliber of pitcher. Darvish is kind of expensive because you y- you got twenty two million for this coming season. The next season, twenty twenty two, he's nineteen million, and after that, eighteen million. So the uh, Padres, that's, that's but not, but he but he will be thirty five, thirty six years yeah. old at that time, Trev. And it's a lot of money as a big chunk to take take on, and it's pretty expensive. You're not going to find too many pitchers out there making more than twenty mil a year. You'd be surprised. I bet if you looked it up. You'd be surprised, especially a guy with his track maybe, record. They're maybe, all making that. Maybe 10? I don't know. Kershaw's making 35. Yeah, yeah, but that's a little I – mean, this elite, elite of the elite. You're not going to – Yeah. I would argue that Darvish is that. In fact, my best friend Keith Law wrote an article saying that he believes Darvish was the best pitcher in the National League last year. Can I ask you guys a question? You know I like trying to see the behind the scenes of the saw. Was this trade locked in, locked in place before the Snell one got announced? Was was Preller uh, weary of one of these trades being announced and having the other, like the Cubs finding out what Snell went for or the Rays finding out what Darvish went for being leaked first? Because obviously Snell is cheaper, uh, but it's three years for Snell, three years for Darvish. Darvish is much more expensive, right? They're both pretty good. I think Darvish I, – I think you can argue both sides of who's been better the last two years. Snell, uh, his Cy Young is looking a bit like a off. What I'm saying is once it comes out that what they got for Snell and they got Patino, are the Cubs, like, locked in? And no. can they be like, hey, you have five more guys that are top 100 prospects. Give us one of them? Or were they just – because what's no. – why did the Cubs not get better? And the Cubs gave the Padres money on top of taking these teenagers. We could see that. We saw it with uh, who, who the Boston and uh, L.A. deal. Like, all you have to do – this deal's not finalized. There's physicals. If the Cubs wanted to go back and get more, they could be like, ah, we see something in such and such as physical, and we don't like it and then they can go back on it. But I don't think the Cubs care. I think they get their salary dumped. They're clearly planning on losing. So I don't know, man. It's it's an interesting situation. And why weren't the Yankees in on the guy? If if, if that's all it costs, 
Tell me, please tell me. Money. Because they won't take on that contract. There's not a lot of teams in baseball that would take on that contract right now. And I know that sounds ridiculous to you, but it's true. You is getting older. But I mean, how many teams are in the Bauer sweepstakes? I mean, that you can essentially break it down to that. I did I did see some commentary that was like, if you're the Angels, what are you doing? Yeah. Like if if this guy was on the table for a bunch of lottery tickets, I mean Go and get that guy. So, uh, yeah, but I, honestly, when it comes down to it, the list of teams that would really be in on a $22 million a year pitcher going through, you know, his middle 30s, the list isn't huge. So I, I think on the GM side of things, uh, I always left reference, you know, the the white erase board that GMs have in their office. Before this offseason, San Diego said, all right, we we've got a little bit of budget. What are we going to do? What does a team look like if we get Bauer for 30 mil a year? Uh, what does it look like if we trade these prospects for Snell? What does Tampa want? Darvish is available. What's the price tag there? And I, I think when they put it all in the pot, Jake Odorizzi, hot, our friend, I think mm-hmm. they said, you know, we cannot deplete our farm system at all. Get three years of Snell at a good price. And I mean, Darvish essentially just to pay the price tag. And when he rolls off the books and Hosmer rolls off the books in a few years, give that money to Tatis and keep running it. So I think, uh, I I think Preller's a smart man and the Cubs, they don't care. They wanted the money off the books. That's all they wanted. I mean, look, I'm just saying, I understand that there's not every team's going to be in on someone, but 22 million down to 19, down to 18 and the Cubs ate some of that. We don't know how much they ate. It's still very affordable for a high-end pitcher, even though he's 34 this year. Last year, it was maybe one of his best seasons. So this guy still got got it. I just when I'm thinking about clubs, this guy helps every single club. If you're a team that thinks you can win a World Series next year, you should be you should have been in on Darvish. And everyone slept. We talked about that on this pod. Teams that are advantageous in this offseason are gonna come out looking great and the Padres have done that uh the White Sox have done it <coughs> yeah there's only 11 pitchers that are making more money than you Darvish in 2021 so it is you know it's it's up there in price it's not cheap for a starting that's pitcher. interesting to me that's I would have guessed more DeGrom Cole Granke Strasburg Scherzer Verlander Price Kershaw Sale Corbin Wheeler and how, how many other teams do we honestly think could have been in on this I like the names that come to mind Braves, Toronto, uh, the New York Mets. Like me and Jim are kind of on the pulse on the Yankees. They wouldn't be in on this at all. All of the central teams are punting. Philly should have been in. The Angels. Phillies depend. We don't know what they're spending. We don't know what they're spending at all. They might be real Mudo or bust. That's why they got a bunch of half assed teenage prospects. Like total. To- they don't have any yeah. problems. Did you see what uh, Cohen tweeted out? Mm-mm. Cohen tweeted out something about the Padres. Like, wow, really good to see. They have all these prospects. And. Like they had, they had like a, they had a stacked cupboard in their minor league and they're using it. He was like, like the minor, Mets don't minor have Minor leaguers that. are the new capital. <laughs> minor leaguers are the new capital. I'm selling all my capital then. There's another Steve Cohen. He said, uh, Steve Cohen tweeted, hey, give the Padres credit. They had a top five farm system that gave them flexibility to trade for Snell. Newsflash, the Mets farm system needs to be replenished. And by the way, I remembered what I blanked on from Trevor before. Trevor, you mentioned the 60-game season where the Padres are good. Let's not forget a 60-game season is still a small sample. Like, the Padres yeah. could have very easily went 30-30. and 30. Does that allow them to make these same moves? I don't know. That's pretty crazy. And the other thing that resonated with me from Trevor yesterday, and uh, uh, Jim, I don't know if you want to take it and do the baseball thing, but Trev, you said if the Rays were the one team that operated like the Rays, it would be fun, right? It would be like, okay, the underdog Rays, they're figuring stuff out. They always trade away. The Rays are the model for every team right now. I saw an Orioles article today that they're mm-hmm. copying the Rays. The Red Sox are copying the Rays. The Dodgers are copying. The fact that every team in baseball sees them as the model, and now we're trading away each superstar as they get paid, it's the opposite of the NBA. 
The MLB wonders why they're not the NBA and why the kids aren't in on it. It's cool when you trade away your stars every year because now they're starting to get paid. The NBA is literally the opposite. Give me your stars. Give me the max contracts, guys. Baseball is sprinting the opposite direction. It's it's crazy. Well, I mean, look, it's it's the reason these organizations are looking towards the Rays is because or looking more and more like the Rays is because the Rays are just dishing out all their executives. They're, you know, there's an executive in Houston. Uh, their GM from Houston Click is from Tampa. The Red Sox GM is from Tampa. Dodgers GM came from Tampa. Uh, I mean, they're they're everywhere. The system is everywhere. And like they the thing that people need to realize is not every organization or not every team can do this. There's articles written about the more teams that tank, the less it works for you. Like the less uh, chance you had to be successful. We talked about the draft being a crap shoot. I mean, you have to develop players. You have to draft, right? You have to wait. You got to make sure those players have everything they need at the big league level. It's, it is a shot in the dark. Tampa has been able to do it. I think their player development is the reason, but these other organizations, they're not all going to be successful like that. And we're going to see some crash and burn in Boston. If Haim can't figure it out, my goodness, they will eat them alive there. People in Boston aren't going to wait around. They're pissed now the Patriots suck. They're not going to wait around for the Red Sox and, and to rebuild for five years. They went through that for a long time before they started winning in the 2000s. They don't want that to happen again. It shouldn't happen again. This is a major market team that has all the resources available to them. Do not accept this. If you're a fan of the Red Sox or you know one of these other bigger market teams, especially the Cubs now, don't accept this. Be outraged, dude. This is ridiculous. Like, go if you own a sports team, your goal should be to win championships. Okay. This is this shouldn't be. We talk about it, it's a business all the time, but you but you have to give back to your community. You take so much from your community, you have to give back. You can't look at it like just a regular old business. It is not like that. It is a business, but it's not like your other businesses. Okay. You have an obligation to your community as a business, as a franchise owner now we're a labor pot again yeah i want to go back to you darvish uh his numbers last year are really good led the whole entire league in fip yes. how many teams do you think he faced that were above average in ops plus mm. Ooh, nl central and al central Ooh. zero three four zero and four final answers Two. Oof. Twins once, White, White Sox Sox. twice. I, I don't know what to make of that last year at all because the, a lot of those offenses were really bad. You Darvish did the best out of all the pitchers that faced them, him and Bauer, so they were top two. But it was only 10 games we or whatever. Bauer too, man. So I, I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, did he make an adjustment or did he just have – a small sample against the league's worst. I, 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 I know. I'm just saying how much so. It's very. I'm. I'm. I'm excited to be two years from now and really look at this season with a better lens. The last I season think with he the better lens. His four seam a lot last year was throwing more cutters, uh, more strikes. That was a big thing for him. Or being around the zone, getting ahead, and maybe that's a byproduct of him facing crappy offensive teams. But he's one of those guys, man. He is nasty. I think he had his yeah. highest velo last year too, just because he's yes. a he's a sick puppy. So, um, yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. I mean, hey, if Darvish suddenly starts to get old, my body's hurting over here. If Darvish gets old next year, then it's two years at twenty million or whatever, and San Diego fans will be saying it was a bad trade for us. So yeah. it's a, a sick game. So Darvish had three games against teams with a uh uh. Above average OPS plus, Snell only had three games against team with the below average OPS plus. Mm-hmm. They both How many had. Games a, they start last year? 10, 11? Snell started eleven, and you started twelve. Okay. When you put it in that perspective, it's a little bit different. It's what's well, just interesting. Not, not no balanced schedules is hard. I mean, when we look at all the Absolutely. old things you know before the interleague player you called it with the twins jim you said who have they beat what kind of team are they it's gonna be even tougher this year trev 
Central's a mess. Central's a mess. Anyway, congrats to the Padres. Really good trade by them. They still have top prospects. They still have budding pitchers that can come up. They're lot. They're they're. It's incredible. They're a team right now. I mean, their rotation is nuts. And you're gonna and they have these guys for two more years, three more years with Clev coming back for the Cubs. I mean, it's a bad time to sell. You you get the money off your books, but the return. On paper, doesn't look impressive at all. You didn't get any of their time. And, you know, who's kidding who? We're not expecting Gore to come back for Darvish or, like, the top, top guys. You just like someone who has some hype behind them. Yeah. These four it, kids, go go read reviews of these four kids by, like, all the experts. It's all, like, you can tell they're scratching and clawing, like, maybe my boy, you know, oh, nah. One day. One day, yeah. If he does, straight, you know. Straight lottery tickets. Straight lottery tickets. Yeah. And, hey, I, you know, I from everything we've heard about the Cubs, they're not the team to do it. The top free agent at every position has not been signed yet. <laughs> so if you're an owner, you could still go win over your fan base pretty easily. We knew the offseason was going to be like this. It kind of started out hot, like, ooh, this guy got $10 million, this guy got whatever. And we were like... Maybe it's going to be different, but now we're seeing there's going to be a freeze here. You know, the holidays, well, didn't stop this from happening, but I think we're going to be waiting on these free agent pitchers. I've been talking to a few of the guys who are free agents and they've been saying the same thing. Like these trades are killing the free agent market teams. That's that need what I pitching. Tra- yeah. I mean, that's what I was trying to say, man. Teams would rather trade a few prospects and know what contract and player they're getting, then go to the negotiating table and figure out how much player X, Y, Z wants. You know, there's a, there's a report out right now that the Phillies haven't made an offer to real Muto. It's probably not exactly. That's, that's bullshit. We, we heard that a lot with Cole and Machado and Harper and a lot of it is like, yeah, we've been in talks, but they haven't officially sent over uh, an official piece of paper that when Real Muto signs it, it's complete. That's a lot of the semantics, which the word official well, offer. It, offer but is, if they offer, if they say this is what we're willing to go to, I would say they would consider that. An offer. It, it <laughs> happened with Machado where like Cashman came out and like, I don't know what they mean by that. They clearly know what our price and years are. We just haven't handed it to them on an official piece of paper, but we've certainly, you know, they know what we're willing to go to. So the make an offer is a semantics game that a lot of agents really like to play to swing momentum uh, against the team. Yeah, what they'll do is they'll say, this is what we want and don't come to us with anything under that. I've heard that from multiple people. That's how some of these top agents operate. Here's our number. Don't make us an offer until you get to that number. And the team will say, okay. So then there's no offer made. Yeah. So. I think, I don't know where Romero is going to go if it's not the Phillies. It'd be interesting. There was another trade, a Christmas Eve trade, and we will pivot to that now. The Nationals picked up Josh Bell from the Pirates for pitchers Will Crow and Eddie Yeen. Uh, this fits for the Nationals. They get a nice first baseman with power and pop. They needed that little protection for Soto. Um, he was amazing last year, but he still got walked like a ton. What did Soto's on base percentage end up with, Jake? It was crazy, right? Ridiculous. Nine hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. And the Pirates make a trade. Now, I dove into this back on Christmas Eve. I kind of forget where I landed. Do you guys have anything on these prospects that the Pirates got or any quick takes on this trade? I've been reading two pitchers. Uh, one of the guys made his debut last year. Didn't It didn't go well. I think Crow was the guy I'm talking about. And then there's another younger guy, Yeen, Y-E-A-N, 19-year-old. Throws cheese. You know, another he, – he could be good. He could be nothing. Uh, people seem to really like Crow. What I think is funny about this trade is the Pirates. You knew you're rebuilding, and now you trade Josh Bell at arguably the lowest point in his career. The lowest his value is going to be. You, you. That's what you did. Well, why, why not? I guess they don't believe that his value can come up next season. 
Because if you have, if the Pirates have any faith in Josh Bell, they let him play for two months and sh- and move him at the deadline next year when someone that, when a team has injuries and there's a team in contention that really needs a power bat, power lefty bat. I mean, does it look like the Pirates know what they're doing? They don't. No, but I mean, that's kind of common sense, so I just think the Pirates don't believe in Josh Bell, but that's not to say we shouldn't believe in him or anything because I don't think the Pirates are great at evaluation or anything right now. You don't well, believe they, in him because you saw him take that one bad round of BP. Very biased non-belief <laughs> by me. I don't want that I'll to leak into a, I don't want that to leak into a real world take, but I saw him walk up swing and miss at five pitches of BP and then walk away and that's all I think about when I hear Josh Bell now. I got to be honest dude, I've I I don't think I've ever seen that. I've taken a lot of BP rounds Jim and I don't think I've ever seen that. So it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You know? It was tough. The BP pitcher was throwing junk. Yeah. But you still can't be with it. I mean, you want to take four pitches and be like, fuck this, I'm out. But to swing and miss four times and then just leave the the box, you know, all the little kids are running the right field hoping that you pop some home runs. You don't even hit one out of the cage. It was a little tough scene for Josh Bell. It was one, it was four pitches. Prospects are lottery tickets. They get a couple of them. Again, there is a new regime in Pittsburgh, so maybe these are guys they liked, and that was probably the risk-reward for them. Do we run out Josh Bell for a couple months and hope he finds his 2019 form where he was a stud and it looked like it all came together? You know, last season, small sample size, he was rough, and he he's got a, he had a weird year in 2018, the year before that, 2017, he was good. So I hope the Nats can tap in. Uh, they've got something. Uh, guys swinging lefty. I don't know if you guys remember this. They, they've they got a, a few guys in the Nationals organization that just copied Soto. So maybe Soto, uh, Josh Bell can take a couple lefty swings, pick up something from Soto. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, he could potentially be a 35 home run switch hitting first baseman, which used to be the MLB dream. Or, I mean, last year he was a negative war guy who's starting to get paid, by the way. He's out of arbitration. So the Pirates, you you said it best, Jim. I mean, it was either roll the dice for two months, hope they figure it out, and you could get a bigger prospect package, or they found a couple prospects they like, and they move on, and it looks like that's what they decide to do. Or they're worried about a, a shortened season. The season didn't start until May 1st, and Bell doesn't even get the chance to up his value, and now they're – so they just want to move quick. Yeah. I don't know. He's go. This is the second year he'll go through arbitration, and then you know you're not the war thing. I get, but you're not you're not buying Josh Bell for his defensive war, and that's what's really holding him back. He's been an above average hitter every single year in the big leagues until last year, and then this is all of a sudden the time they want to trade him. It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's why the Pirates stink because they do, do stuff th- like this. Do you think? Um- well, yeah. I mean, the other guy, we didn't talk about him, Yeen. He's a young kid. He's actually the piece in this deal, not Crow. Crow, they might be a plug-in play where he can start in AAA next year and be the first one to come up join the rotation for the Pirates. Um, I think Yeen is the higher long-term play. I don't even know if we're saying his name right, but he's supposed to be like a flamethrower, young stud kind of guy. Um, does the Nats, do the Nats make more moves now, Jake? Um, yes, d- does this Nats, Nats are set up? Nats are set up to do something big. Um, they, do they go at, get like Odo or Paxton? Um, they could get another arm. I think you'd like that because they still have Scherzer, Corbin, Strasburg. Which again, I mean those those guys at the top, they'll they'll do it. Fetty Wap is there, Joe Ross. So you'd like to see another starter. I want to see them get another Batman because uh, Trey Turner had a crazy season last year. Everyone looks at Soto and his 490 on base, it turns out. Uh, Trey Turner hit 335 with a 394 OBP. Andrew Stevenson, a, a young guy for them, had a good year. I think they're going to bank on him. If they could get one more big bat, and I don't know if it's Chris Bryant, I don't know who it is. I think the Nats have a little coin to spend. Uh, I think they, I think they're poised to make another move. I was in on them getting real muto for a little bit. I think the Phillies made their bed when they brought Dombrowski back, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Chris Bryant and them doing a trade like that, or, you know, dip into the free agent pool a little bit. I, I, I think I like that for the Nats. Sure. 
I just think they're going to make a move somewhere. I'm interested to see who's going to get Odo or Paxton. I think, those, unfortunately, I think those guys' prices are going to drop. And I think if they have good years, they can really change the rotation. A lot of upside if the prices drop pretty low. I think Odo still gets paid. I think Paxton's in a brutal spot, spot man. With his injury history, you just can't give him the years. Uh, I think Odo will still find a nice nice little three-year landing spot. All right. So, good move by the Nats. Is there any harm to this? If they get, if they eventually put a DH in for the NL, it's a big win for them. Like, Josh Bell's, I'm looking at his numbers now. It's pretty brutal defensively over there. And there are some things you can do to change that. Maybe they can position him differently, da-da-da-da. But... They're they're like I said, they're getting him for his bat, hoping he can turn it around and be the player. I mean, I, and I I think he can. We talk about this all the time. Twenty twenty was dumb. I don't put much stock into any twenty twenty stats. Uh, the rest of the time he's been in the big leagues, he's been an above average bat. You I do think Luke perfect. Voigt's the best home run hitter in all of baseball, though? I do not. Was he the only one that went over twenty? He yeah. was right. Yeah, I think so. That was wild. And Trev, maybe, maybe trade Luke Voigt. You guys hate when I say that. Go. No, I don't want maybe, to that conversation. Maybe <laughs> the uh, – and Trev, hey, to your point, how many guys in baseball have a 37 homer, you know, 936 OPS season in their books? That was 2019, the last full season. So, yeah, if you're the Nats, I mean, there's a little bit of risk. I think he's making around 5 mil or something like that. But, man, if you can – if you can get a 30 homer season out of them, you you made that back and some. So it's not a bad bet by them. And if they go get another like the like if they don't go get another starter, then maybe they did and Bell is a total bust, then maybe Crow not being around, like he had a rough two outings this year, maybe that hurts them then. But if they go use some money to go get a starter to plug into their rotation. Not even a great guy, but a four or five. I really think there's not a lot of risk here for the Nats at all with this move. So I like it for them. Mm. You too. Trying uh, to figure out who I'm looking at the free agents. Cause a lefty would fit in really good with that lineup. I mean, Brantley, could he play enough left field for them? I don't know. Um, Isn't Brantley. Yeah, no, no, Nats Brantley, are going to make another. I thought Brantley went somewhere. No, not yet. Dude, no one's gone anywhere yet. I mean, really, yeah. like, no one's gone anywhere yet. It's crazy. Mike Miner, uh, Charlie Morton, one or two more that I'm blanking on right now. There's a lot left. Speaking of the Yankees, Trevor, we can do this. The Dodgers pick up Tommy Canely. He had Tommy John halfway last through last year, so he's going to miss all of the 2021 season. Uh, he should be good for 2020. Two, you see a lot of teams pick up Tommy John guys, um, have them rehab, and then hope you get that first year back out of rehab with them. Uh, You know, Avaldi was one of these guys. Pineda was one of these guys. I'm sure that um, we can name a lot that don't don't have Yankees ties, but that's where my brain goes to easily. So Dodgers fans, Canley's a beast. If he comes back and he returns to form and you have him as part of your bullpen piece in 2022, he is a delight as a fan, and his changeup is as nasty as you'll see a changeup be. He's like a lefty killer, even though he's a righty. So I, the Dodgers have the money to make this move, and they have they can take on an injured player for one year to win the next year because they have that wiggle room. So I, I mean, just I'm happy that Tommy went to a contender. Um, good guy to have. I mean, 2022, he's a good guy. There's not a lot of time needed on this topic, but Dodgers got Tommy Canely for 2022, basically. Yeah, I mean, the the weakness of the Dodgers, if they have any at all, it's been the bullpen. So uh, Now they got a pretty nice pen with Gratterall and your ain't, well, the, whatever. That's yeah, they, fi- they figured it out during the playoffs. I'm not sure the system they used during the playoff plays over 162. Gonzalez was huge for them. Um, Urias was back there. I, I don't know if they want to keep him back there. Probably not. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, you need bullpen pieces, dude. So this is a, this is a good move for them. 
fun guy. Uh, will also be a big impact in the clubhouse and Dodgers behind the scene media stuff. The Yankees really had fun with him, which they rarely do with people. One of the best changeups in baseball when he's right. And uh, yeah, I mean the the thing that caught my eye on it is this is a this is the new big market team move. There's a lot of small market teams. We we heard from a couple of them that were like, we would never do this. Um, and I think that's kind of going into my new theory about bullpens and small market where. If you can have a 500K guy in your bullpen, throw a bunch of bullets in you. I, I think there's MLB teams that want their bullpen to be under 5 million total. Never mind Tommy Canley's one year. Yeah. Yep. All right. Some other little moves here. The Royal signed Irvin Santana to a minor league deal. The Rangers signed Charlie Culberson to a minor league deal. The Rangers signed Kohei Arihara. Did I say that right? Kohei Arihara. I don't know. To a two year 6.2. It's kind of a bigger move. Um, and then the, uh, we kind of talked about this yesterday. The Padres signed the shortstop, Kim, from – is he coming from Japan? Korea. Korea. He's 25. We talked a little bit yesterday about Korean baseball players and how, Trev, you you talked a lot about how they get overpowered when they come to the U.S. Someone in the comment section said that Chu uh, for the Rangers and Choi for everyone are different because they were signed at 18 – and yes. they were molded to face major leaguers when you play in the Asian leagues and you're built to hit that pitching and play that style, then come over, which is a good point. So this kid's 25, so we'll see how much he, if he's already set in his skill set or if he has time to change and adopt because he's on the younger side than some of the older guys that come over. But I don't have much on anything of those on Kim, Arihara, Culberson, Santana. If anyone has anything on those guys... Speak up or forever hold your peace. Jake? Well, you know, I'm our I'm our foreign international scout, so I'll start there. Um, yeah, man. I mean, for Kim and the Padres, it was a weird thing. Jim, I'll tell you, and maybe we'll put this in the bad column. Part of the reason he signed with the Padres is because they gave him full MLB contract, no minor league options. Toronto wanted him uh, to a similar contract, but they wanted to leave minor league options in there, and he said no. So he's going to San Diego. He wants to play Major League Baseball. Good for you, kid. Uh, the rumor is Cronenworth potentially kicks out to left field. It gives them options. I'm interested to see, man. And, and the the other that's thing that's so with interesting. Him, yeah, can man, we stay? I mean, can they, I? How how much is are they giving him? Uh, do we have the official numbers on it? I don't know. Let I don't see. have the full full number, but it's something like seven ye- or six years, seven to eight per year. So in the 50 ish range. Is it that much? 50 to 50-ish. It that much. Wait, say that again. That's what the Joel Sherman tweet was. That's so interesting. So basically, he doesn't have any options. So the Padres cannot send him to the minor leagues unless he agrees to be sent to the minor leagues. Or can they even, if he does, Trev? He can waive, right? He can, they can like. Oh, yeah, yeah, you guys, that's, that's way off, BBD. It's a four year, $25 million. This is what the initial tweet I read yesterday was. Oh, sorry. I didn't so, mean so anyway, this I, I said I didn't see a final number. <laughs> if he's really good, that's awesome. Congrats. If he's a great bench player and can come off the bench and swing it and play defense, good. That's probably not what he wants to be a a partial part time player. If he stinks, I mean. It's not a huge money commitment for the Padres. Yeah, but like that just uh, sucks for him. Like, wouldn't you rather be able to go get if you stink, if you come over and you just can't keep up and you need to go to AAA? I guess he'd just agree to go to AAA. They'd have can, to ask him. He, he can agree. Yeah, they can. They can do that if it, if they, it would if, suck if he refuses and they don't want to get rid of him and they just he plays once every five days and kills a bench spot. The only thing I, I, the way they could do that is fake an injury. Which is called the used to be called the Phantom DL. I guess it'd be called the Phantom IL now. Yeah, and then still he can play true. Rehab games, uh, but actually, if he doesn't have minor league options, then he would be exposed to waivers. So I don't think that he could just be sent down without be, uh, excuse me, being on the Phantom IL. But this is like and a they, a low risk type move for them. You know, I, I think they this believe is very in nice. Yeah. They believe in him. They are. I saw someone tweeted out the other day. The Padres are one of the few teams that has a full time scout over there. Um, 
and they were in on uh Quang Hum Kim on St. Louis when he came over and they missed out on him. So that scout was probably yelling like, Hey, I told you guys, I told you he was going to be good. So they believe in him. They want this guy to play. Cause when you guys start talking bench spots again, think of the state of baseball right now. Teams don't want to spend millions on the bench. That's, that's they what I'm saying. Spend- 500 K. So this guy better be a starter for the Padres. And uh, the other thing, and Jim, you, you were kind of hit it on the head when it talking about the, the Rangers pitchers too, which I want to pronounce it. Arihara. Um, that contract was weird for me too. Cause it was two years, 6 million or whatever. And that contract just basically tells me you don't believe like, uh, so do you believe this guy is going to be a pitcher for you for the next two years or don't? Like, I, I don't know. That contract to me just smells like you're not sure you're throwing something at the wall and you're hoping you hit, which, hey, maybe they do. But it also feels like uh, we don't really believe in this guy because if you did, you're either going to give him a little more cheese or a couple more years. It sounds about right for the Rangers. They don't know what's going on <laughs> over there. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea. <laughs> They need to call me. I need to help. Chris them Young, out. Trev, unbelievable. Yeah, I guess he could change, but but John Daniels is still there, right? Is he just he just moved up? He's the so. president of baseball ops now. I don't know, man. I, I'm curious. I watched a highlight video of Kim. They just need arms, Jake. They just might need. Yeah. They just they might like let this dude just pitch every five games and sh- shrug. If he's really good, it's fantastic value, but it like. If he was really good, I don't think two years, six mil would be the contract we're seeing. Yeah. Paying three mil a year to uh, let your let your triple A pitchers develop a little more. I don't know. This is this is. I don't mean to come at Kim at all because like I hope he's good. I want to see everyone succeed. I really do. And I, it'll be fun to see him come over because like we talked about yesterday, not a lot of um, guys come from Korea hitters that have played there and have success here. And even Japan. There's been a few. We've had Matsui and Ichiro. Obviously, they were incredible. Uh, but I watched a highlight video on Kim, and it was all these homers, and he pimps them and does all this stuff. But I started looking at the pitches, and these are meatballs. These are like and, – and they all were off-speed, like change-ups in that miss, backup sliders. This guy's teeing off. This is a different league, dude. They don't do that here. They are going to throw 95 and up at your letters and go ahead and try to hit it. So I'm curious to see how he's going to handle Velo because I think that's always the biggest thing. Velo plays. They don't have a ton of it in Korea. That's a lot of off speed. That's just the way the game is played there. It's not the way the game is played here. It's top of the zone, spin rate heaters. All right, so about, there you go. About, Trev does not I, believe in Kim. How about Kevin Euclid on Twitter the other day saying, when are we going to find some content talking about different sequencing? And it's like, hello. Dude, there is this whole underbelly of the internet that is these. <laughs> okay. I mean, do we got time? Can I just talk about this? No, real quick? we're not no? doing hitting Twitter today. We're not doing hitting Twitter. Hitting today. Twitter is there's a crossroads. Old ex MLBers versus the new hitting gurus on twitter are fighting and there's even this other this other guy king of juco who's challenging mike cameron to a to a hit off which i think is going to be hilarious and it, but there's just it, there's no middle ground and that's people are ridiculous that they can't find a middle ground it's analytics or old school and there's nothing in between which is the dumbest thing why are people so dumb good luck kim and arahara be good. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. I think that's kind of it, guys. Uh, I had something else I wanted to do at the end. Yeah, it's a big thing right on our banner, bro. <laughs> the biggest podcast in the world for Sam Fold. Oh, yeah, I skipped it on our list because we had it number two. Uh, but we are Sam Fold Pod. So, Trev, do you want to say hi? I'm happy. I think this role is better than for him than being a manager the manager is a grind you don't have a ton of say i think sam is better than that i i I, he wanted the boston job because he's from there and that's a pretty prestigious managing job it's not like you're the manager of i keep banging on the pirates like you're the manager of the pirates manager of the red sox a little bit more prestigious but i think he's fits better in this role um what i really think happening here is dave dombrowski comes in he's running the show 
input from Sam will be there. And then I think Dombrowski eventually steps down and Sam will be running that team three, four years from now. And I think that's great. He, he is the guy. He only retired four years ago. And he was, and he just moved at the ladder so fast. And it's because he's a stud. So I'm happy for him. He's already in Philly, doesn't have to move his family anymore. They have a house there. The kids are there. So I'm, I think, you know, that's a one part of all these moves that people don't think about. It's like you got to uproot your family and do all this stuff. Sam gets to keep his family in place. And I think that's a good thing for him. So Philly's fans should be excited. I heard this about Sam Fold. You put Sam Fold in a room full of baseball executives and he fits in. You put Sam Fold in a room with a bunch of baseball grinders and he fits in. Remember when I led the league in double plays? True. That's so disrespectful. It's so <laughs> disrespectful. Well, I think the for me, the last time I saw Sam Fold, I was actually in Cali. I took the five to the 405. And uh, I don't know. He's a grinder. Philly fans should be celebrating today. 45. Keep going, man. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about you at all. No. Yeah. You're a great person, Jake. Thanks, Trev. That's awesome. Congrats Jeez. on that, Jake. Yeah. What a, what a way to end the year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I don't know what's a good way to end the year. We're the number one podcast in baseball, and I know we don't really do pats on the backs a lot or, like, brag about that a lot. But we, we hit number one uh, in November, and we were all like, holy smokes, ESPN, um, MLB. Like, there's a ton of other major networks that we – and I thought it was like a one-week what a blip, you know, because we had like a big episode that people came for. I think the World Series had just happened. The World and- Series, yeah. You know, and I – and then uh, I checked it today. Well, they email every now and then I didn't check it. And then I looked at it. We've been number one majority – for the last two months, which I had no fucking clue, Buster only usually number one forever. So thanks to everyone that listens and shares and watches. And that does not even take into account YouTube views. And we do pretty decent for hour long episodes over there as well. So, hey, thank you to everyone. Uh, I think this is our last live episode of the 2020 year. We have a pre-planned episode coming out on Thursday. It'll be the Buster and Ken Rosenthal interviews from winter meetings. But uh, that was pretty pretty exciting to see, and it's a big credit to everyone that listens and, and has been with us on this journey, so we thank you for that. Um, number one baseball pod. Pretty insane. We started Thanks, less than two years ago. Bang. Bang. I mean, can I just say? What do you want to say? It's like, obviously, we are the best baseball pod. I'll pat, oh. our, I'll pat us on the back. <laughs> Some more humble pie. I'm just yeah. saying, dude, we are the best baseball pod. We should be number one every day. I will say this, Trev. I don't listen to any others, so I can't compare. Because then you just steal their either. you steal their thoughts. I don't want to steal their wow. thoughts. There's 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 a lot of good baseball pods out there. There's people doing some really, really good work. Nobody does what we do. Well. Heard it here first. Oh, my God. Whoever's running the Talking Baseball account <laughs> just posted some sexy pictures of Jake. No. no. Oh, yeah. I gave, no, I gave him a couple. Uh, Jim, on that <laughs> note, we thank Me? the fans. Fans are very important. We love our chat. We're, we love this. Also, I have to give credit to the guys that run our social. They kill it, dude. Yep. That's Kyle, a big Zach, part. BBD, a lot of behind the scenes. It's a whole – I mean, he, Bill, Keith – there's probably some other people as well. Mm, that is a sexy pick, huh? Oh, I don't even want to. How look. did this come to be, uh, BBD? You're part of so this? So the, I didn't participate in this one, but uh, on Instagram, it's been a trend lately to do like a post a pick of. So we're doing that on the Talking Baseball account right now. Uh, so we're just finding old picks. So someone asked for sexy Jake, and I think that sent Kyle on a chase. Oh my, oh my God, Jake! The John Boy Media gift. I think Bill's out there. He's been on a couple trips. That he said, "I have a bunch of pictures that haven't seen the light of day." I've got you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Bill? <laughs> Did you see this John Boy Media gifts Twitter account picture that they made of you in the photo of yourself? That's really good too. 
Phil's just been waiting for a rainy day to let these rip, huh? Who made that gift, BBD, of Jake with the picture frame? Um, that's a good question. Probably Kyle. Probably that would have been funny. Is that this episode? Yesterday? It was yesterday. Do you guys know what Probably GIF Kyle. stands for? Uh, graphic interface fucking. Yep. Mm. Got it right. Now I got to add the age restriction. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Oh, I so Jim, you sent yeah. me that yesterday. Uh, the the we were number one or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. Went on there and started reading some of like our reviews, and <laughs> dude, we have th- like all are very positive, and then there's like a few that are negative. And so one of the biggest reasons we get a negative negative reviews is for our language, which I don't think we cuss a lot. But people are like, you say f bombs. Stop saying f bombs. I I, I do. Jake doesn't really curse. I do. I mix well, them in. I don't think it's that egregious. But anyways, that was one of the things. Those don't that, those don't bother me at all because like I yeah. I'm not trying to cater to an audience that is cuss free. So I don't like I'm not. And we also know we're not trying to be like the we curse podcast. Yeah, yeah like I think we land pretty in the. There's a the there's middle. a thirteen. Right? There's a few that's like too Yankee centric, which you guys also talk about. So we get that. But the thing that was the funniest to me was, um, there was a few that said they were we were racist. Oh, because white guys, white people. Yeah. But then there was another few that said that were three white guys talking about race and we need to shut up. So like we're either racist against white people or we shouldn't be talking about race. Because we're white people, you can't win. Yeah, well, I, yeah. The only the only thing that I think is true is the Yankees bias ones, and I, I do think we do that too often. You admit I, that on, on I the well, I have been trying to tell us not stop doing this. We had some, uh, we had like a week where like everything landed back to Derek Jeter, and we find it. I don't find it fun, so I don't know. So I'm sure the audience doesn't find it fun. So that's the only uh, review we get that I'm like, ah, eh, that's a true one. Let's work on that. You want me to pull the Yanks real quick? No. no, I do think it's hard though sometimes because sometimes like if I try to think of guys that got Tommy John and got signed, like I just know more about the team I followed for 20 years than the teams I haven't followed closely for 20 years. So, so sometimes it's like, well, this is just the example I know of because of the fan I am. It's not trying to no. steer the conversation that way. It's just my example. I get it. I mean, it's it's part of the reason that, like, Simmons drove me nuts for years and part of the reason I want to be good. He'd, be, he'd do an example, and he'd be like, these Chiefs remind me of the 08 Celtics. And you'd be like, no, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't. That's just what you know. Yeah, so I understand that as well. How much would the Yankees be cleaning up if they didn't have the Stanton, Chapman, and Ottavino contracts, huh? Part of the plan is having those contracts. The Padres are just like in the perfect storm right now. Like they, like, the, you know, because if you're, if you were a buyer three years ago, you're not prepped for this, but they, their window just aligned with the storm of, of sellers yeah. mar- or buyers market perfectly. And um, a little bit is smarts and a little bit's kind of luck. Uh, but they also do, they've been doing this. Like Machado, they got Machado and I was like, yeah. what? And then they, They've had a plan, so a lot of credit to the Padres. Dang. Oh, this is what I wanted to do to end the show, and we probably lost so many people because we've been so casual the last five minutes. Listen to all these names, Trev. You were asking about if Brantley's still around, and Jake was asking what bats are still around. Listen to all these names that we still have to have signed somewhere, and a lot of these guys are probably going to, maybe three, are probably going to warrant like episodes. Ozuna, LeMahieu, Bauer, Cruz, Springer, Real Muto, um, and then all these guys don't warrant anything, but still fun to be out there. Um, JBJ, Didi Gregorius, Liam Hendricks, a big bullpen piece that can be moved. Brantley, Colton Wong, Justin Turner still has to announce that he's going back to the Dodgers for two years. Uh, Marcus <laughs> Simeon, uh, the, you know, even Wayno and Yachty, those are like interesting, even though they're probably going to go back to the Cardinals. Like, there's still so Tanaka, uh, Rosenthal, um, Garrett Richards is a pitcher that I'm interested in. Taiwan Walker, he's been on the show. Hap, uh, Archie Bradley's a bullpen piece that can really help someone. Simmons, a shortstop for a year. Like, there's still so much news that's going to come. Uh, so, we're really just starting. You're going to be waiting. Yeah. Biggest con- biggest contract so far, 
James McCann, who was the backup catcher on the White Sox last year. <laughs> who <laughs> could be on our hot guys list. Oh! Ooh. oh stop the show! I didn't vote for that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you in 2021. There will be an episode Thursday. It's pre-recorded. <laughs>